Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be going through a science fiction film entitled Elite Squad 2. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. One night at Hospital Benedettino in Rio de Janeiro, Colonel Nascimento is being followed by an unidentified assailant. He grabs his gun and swiftly flees the hospital. The assailant and other collaborators quickly drive to follow him and continuously shoot on his vehicle. Four years ago in Bung 1 Pellegrino Penitentiary Complex, Red Gang prisoners spray paint on CCTVs to block the prison guard's view. Then, Curio, a prison guard, arrives to hand Beirata, the Red Gang leader, his gun as per their deal. However, Beirata orders his inmates to tie Curio and beat him up. They hold him hostage as they leave their cell. Quickly, the gang moves to proceed to the cell of another gang. Beirata shoots at his fellow inmates he has issues with. He continuously beat on Quail, a gang leader, and then lit his body alive. Suddenly, the BOPI, a police tactical unit, positions themselves at the prison's exit point to aim at Beirata and his men. The BOPI awaits orders from Nascimento to shoot. However, Beirata will not surrender and negotiate with the police unless they bring Diogo Fraga, a professor and human rights activist, to meet him. Meanwhile in a conference room, Fraga is teaching his students about the situation of Brazil in 50 years. He receives a call from BOPI to fly towards the penitentiary immediately. When he arrives at the penitentiary, he immediately persuades Beirata to let Curio go. Nascimento orders the police force to hold their fire yet Captain Andre Matias disobeys his order. Andre shoots Beirata to death, including his gang. Shocked, Fraga grows furious at the police as the government promises him no massacre in the penitentiary. At night, Fraga furiously tells the press about the bloodshed caused by the police on the penitentiary. He claims that Nascimento and Andre caused all of it. The next morning Nascimento is called by Formoso, Pmerge commander, to dismiss him as Bopi commander. Andre claims to want to take the blame as he has caused the massacre on his own. However, with Nascimento's name tarnished, Nascimento will take the blame instead. As Nascimento arrives at the restaurant where Formoso is, he grows surprised when all the diners are applauding and congratulating him for what he has done. Instead of being demoted, Nascimento gets promoted as Undersecretary of Intelligence, in charge of all wiretapping in the city. Valmir, his new co-worker, gives him a tour to his office in the new department. On the other hand, Andre is sent to an ordinary police office where corrupt police officers work. With him being a former BOPI officer, Captain Roca grows frightened as Andre might expose their misconduct. Yet, Colonel Fabio Barbosa confidently assures that Andre will not find out about their scheme. After some time, Andre contacts Clara Vidal, a journalist, to expose the government for not supporting the BOPI long before the Bong One operation. With that, the government grows furious with him and locks him in jail for 30 days. Due to that, Nascimento is having a hard time requesting Andre's transfer to a new department. Meanwhile, Fraga, now a famous human rights activist and married to Nascimento's ex-wife, runs for state legislator. Undoubtedly, his thousands of supporters vote for him and get elected to the position. After some time in BOPI headquarters, Nascimento orders his men to prepare for their next mission. Nascimento expands BOPI's weapons, officers, vehicles and aircrafts to easily cease drug cartels all over the city. Later on in Favela's neighborhood, BOPI commences eliminating drug dealers. They shoot at escapees and attackers. With Nascimento leading the operation, he hopes that the elimination of drug dealers will reduce police corruption in the city. Subsequently, Roca and other local police head to Marcinho, a drug dealer, to collect money from him. However, with numerous drugs confiscated by BOPI and fewer drugs coming through dealers, the less money they earn. Roca shoots on Marcinho for offering them a small amount of cash instead of the exact amount they agreed upon. Then, they leave his dead body on the streets and confiscate his rifles and belongings. Thereafter, Barbosa grows furious with Roca when he finds out about Marcinho's death. He heads to Commander Formoso's office to request Roca's transfer, however, Formoso shoves him away instead. As Roca learns that he'll no longer earn much from the drug dealers, he devises a plan to earn much more from slums. With that in mind, Major Roca forms a militia which switches sides from protecting drug dealers to protecting the whole slum and businesses against them. Of course, they'll extort money from them in exchange for their service. Some time later, Roca charges a local van driver to pay him 90% of his salary. When he fails to do so, Roca orders his men to beat him and shoot afterwards. In the present time, the dirty system of local police takes over the western district of Rio de Janeiro. Consequently, Fraga learns about this and the situation in militia territories. Witnesses of the crimes of Roca and his men are shot to death. Fraga gathers evidence of their crime to present and report to Valcercunha, city's chairman. 
One morning, he goes to Cunha's office. He presents the evidence of the crimes of Roca to Cunha and believes he has formed mafias. Legislator Fortunato cuts his statement and argues with his claims. Cunha orders him to set aside the matters regarding Roca and focus more on the upcoming election. Some time later, politicians gather to party before their election. Roca, invited to the party, introduces Garrisi, Fortunato and Gelino to the slum community to gain their votes for the election. Later on, Roca invites Barbosa on a yacht and tells him his plan to take over the entire western district, especially the Tonke neighborhood, one of the last drug strongholds. He orders his men to threaten and attack the Tonke police force to steal their precinct weapons. Meanwhile on Tonke police precinct, Roca's men, armed and dressed as criminals, barges their way in the precinct. They steal rifles and hold the officers captive there. Thereafter, Clara visits Tonke precinct to interview Tonke's chief of police. The chief claims to have not recognized any one of the perpetrators but as he observes them during the raid, he believes that they are part of militia. He tells Clara about it but orders her to not tell anyone that it came from him. Afterwards, Clara reports to Fraga her findings. Fraga immediately believes the militia's involvement thus, he orders Rafa, his stepson, to give the militia documents to Clara to investigate further on the case. Meanwhile, the Bopi has wiretapped the Tonke village to investigate the drug dealer's connection to the stealing of the police station weapons. Jolino, the city's governor, then orders them to raid the Tonke community to search for those weapons. With this order, it gives an idea to Roca to devise a plan to lead the operation to avoid suspicions of them. One morning, Roca and his men arrive at the market to meet Andre. They convince him to make way for them to lead the raid operation. With little capability from Andre, Roca uses his connection to make Andre return to Bopi and persuade Nascimento to join their force. After some time in the Bopi department, Nascimento discovers from the wiretap tapes that the drug dealers in Tonke have nothing to do with the police station weapon stealing. Thus, the raid must not be pushed through. As he enters a meeting room, he grows surprised at Andre's return after four years in the local police department. Nascimento notifies Formoso of his findings and suggests not continuing with the raid. However, Barbosa claims to have an anonymous intel about the weapons amongst the drug dealers. So, the raid is to push through regardless. Sometime later in Tonke village, the Bopi raids the drug dealers. They shoot at attackers and escapees and chase them with armored vehicles. One by one, the Bopi checks on the weapon used by the drug dealers. As they gather the weapons, they show it all to Nascimento. Nascimento learns that it is not the police station weapons they're looking for. Meanwhile, Felpa, head drug dealer, is left on the loose and is being chased by the Bopi whilst Roca and his men pretend to be helping in the raid. As Andre manages to catch Felpa, he immediately confronts him regarding the stolen police station weapons. Clueless, Felpa claims to have no knowledge about the stolen weapons and did not plan the attack on the police station. Then, Roca and his men arrive to stop the interrogation. Roca shoots Felpa which makes Andre grow furious at them. Andre's intuition tells him that there's something off with Roca and his men. He questions Barbosa about his anonymous intel yet, Barbosa fails to tell him the name as he made it all up in the first place. Pissed off, he leaves the area but unfortunately, Roca's men shoot him to death. Surprised, Barbosa furiously yells at Roca for ordering the killing of Andre. Roca tells him to make up excuses to the Bopi and point Andre's death to the drug dealers. Barbosa has no choice but to cover Andre's death or else, he'll be a part of the suspects. Soon after, Andre is buried in a cemetery. Devastated with his death, Nascimento investigates who killed Andre during the raid. He asks Barbosa if he knows anything about Andre's death yet, Barbosa claims not knowing any. Meanwhile, Formoso orders Valmir to uninstall wiretaps in the Tonke community. Valmir reports it to Nascimento immediately. Nascimento tells him to keep wiretaps in place but without Formoso's knowledge. Then, Rafa overhears their conversation and asks if it is related to the militia who stole the police station weapon. Nascimento grows surprised as Rafa knows something relevant about it. Thereafter, Nascimento orders Valmir to wiretap Fraga's phone to listen to his conversation with Clara and find out more about what they know about the militia. After a while, Clara reports her findings on the stolen weapons to her boss, Camelo. Camelo orders her to find evidence to prove her claim so that they can publish the story to the public. Later that day, Clara and her photographer secretly investigate the militia headquarters at a widow's house. The militia members are equipped with stolen police station weapons while they unload boxes from their minivan. The photographer snaps pictures of the weapons to use as evidence later on. When night comes, Clara and the photographer make their way in the widow's house. They survey the whole house and find the boxes unloaded earlier. 
Curious, they open the boxes and find election posters and banners of candidates Garrisi, Fortunato, and Gelino. Immediately, Clara reports it to Fraga whilst Nascimento is secretly listening on the other line. Fraga commands Clara to leave the house due to the risk of being caught by Roca and his men. Unfortunately, Roca and his men immediately arrive and hold capture of Clara and the photographer. Roca's men rapes Clara whilst the other militia members kill the photographer. The next day, Clara and the photographer's body are burned and their teeth are removed. Later on, Roca's men bury them to make the investigation difficult for the investigators. Meanwhile, Fraga, together with investigators, goes to the widow's house to look for Clara. However, they find no evidence to prove that she's been there. So, Fraga has to find evidence in order for the investigators to believe him. Later that day, Fraga heads to Camello's office to report Clara missing. Camello does not intend to help him nor publish his claims about the militia being the suspects. Some time later, Roca learns that Clara has reported her findings to Fraga. As Fraga discovers their scheme, Roca devises a plan to take him down to not spill the beans. As Nascimento learns Fraga is the next target of Roca, he waits at Fraga's house to inform him of Roca's scheme. As Fraga's vehicle arrives, a motor rider shoots at his vehicle and wounded Rafa sitting on the back seat. Nascimento continuously opens fire at the moving shooter while he hastily flees the scene. Later on in hospital Benedettino, Rafa is having his surgery. Rosen, his mother, weeps at Nascimento. Nascimento hands the wiretap tape to Fraga and leaves to take revenge on those involved with the shooting of his son. Prior to the beginning, Roca orders his men to prepare weapons to attack Nascimento in the hospital. Aware of being followed, Nascimento has called on Bopi for backup. As he drives away from the hospital, Roca and his men start to open fire at his vehicle. Bopi arrives and shoots at them. Roca and his men retreat and Nascimento and the Bopi cease fire. Some time later that night, Nascimento readily places a Bopi checkpoint at Garrisi's place. As Garrisi arrives, Nascimento furiously beats him and threatens to kill him and everyone involved in the shooting if his son dies. With the disappearance of Clara and her photographer, the assembly opens a congressional hearing investigation. However, the wiretap tape submitted by Fraga from Nascimento is illegal thus, making Gelino order Nascimento's resignation for illegally wiretapping. One morning, Nascimento is called at the congressional hearing to testify. Nascimento exposes those involved with the militia and corruption such as Legislate Fortunato, Garrisi, and Gelino, the governor. With his testimonies, he has sent lots of dirty criminals and cops to jail. Some are killed by other conspirators. Roca and his men are shot to death by Barbosa on his yacht whilst Gelino and Garrisi win the election. Fraga, on the other hand, uses his power to bring down Garrisi and Gelino. He convinces politicians and the public to remove the corrupt and criminal politicians in position. Days gone by, Nascimento is waiting for Rafa's recovery. Fortuitously, Rafa wakes up and Nascimento grows delighted after waiting for days for him to wake up. Subscribe for more videos, and click the notification bell for updates. Thanks for watching.